from a baby. You tried to walk. You didn't walk the first time. When you tried to feed yourself the first time, you didn't do it right. When you tried to learn how to write, you didn't do it right the first time. When you were learning your alphabet, you didn't do it right the first time. When you were learning your math and you were learning your reading and your writing and the sciences and all those kind of things, you didn't do it right the first time. So why should having a conversation with somebody and this be a skill you haven't practiced yet, why should this be any different? So get rid of that limiting belief of, oh, what if it's awkward? It's going to be. Embrace it. Welcome, guys. Welcome to Motivate, Grind, Succeed, the podcast where we empower you to level up your life in faith, fellowship, fitness, and finance. With each episode, we are packing it with incredibly practical tips and takeaways to help you to thrive. Guys, if you enjoy the show, please leave us a rating and a review as it really, really does mean the world to us. Join our email list to become part of our inner circle, guys. Get the inside scoop on all the brand new episodes that we got getting released, the exclusive merch drops, the upcoming events, so, so much more. You don't want to miss it. Be sure to sign up for that if you want to. Don't let the phone will get the best of you guys. If you want to know what's going on, sign up for the email list completely free. No spam. I promise you. All the emails are coming directly from me to you. Nothing but love on this side of the internet. Sign up now, guys. Unlock a whole world of excitement. And if you're also passionate about supporting the show and you feel so inclined to do so, we do have the mgsclub.club website. You can go ahead there. If you want to get some merch, you can. If you want just the ebooks that are there, cool. You can go ahead and do that. Or if you just want to leave a quick little donation of whatever sort, that's perfectly fine as well. Do whatever you want to do. Or if you just want the free value that we give, that's perfectly fine as well. But either way, guys, everything that I mentioned, you're going to find the links down below in this episode's description. So without further ado, let's go ahead and let's dive in to this episode, guys. And today we are going to be talking about small talk and how to master it. Now, if you are anything like me personally, you absolutely despise small talk. You hate small talk. Small talk is boring. It's boring. It's fruitless. No one likes it. I don't like it. It sucks sometimes. Because you got to go up to people and say, hey, how you doing? How's the weather? It's it, it, it seems like there's nothing that can be garnered from small talk. However, guys, small talk actually can be important. Even though I despise it still sometimes to this day, it is actually very, very important. And we're going to go through why today I believe small talk is important. And overall, I'm not saying that you need to have small talk and do just small talk, but rather seeing small talk as a gateway into more conversation. Don't worry, we're gonna explain it. We're gonna explain it, okay? So small talk, usually, right, we see it as a very light, very casual kind of conversation, but it does serve a crucial purpose in our lives. As I said before, it acts as a bridge to allow us to connect with new people. It allows us to establish some rapport and just overall just break the proverbial ice that's already there when you're talking to somebody new. It allows us to lay that foundation to be able to build upon that for future conversations. So whether you're at a social event, you're at some kind of networking event, you're in the workplace and you're meeting up with a new coworker or whatever have you, small talk can help you to open the doors to create that opportunity to create some genuine connections. So how in the world do we go about actually making the small talk worth it? Well, glad you asked me because we're going to go through some approaches. First approach is to start with an open-ended question that invites people to share more about themselves. So what is the all iconic question that we tend to ask people? We usually ask them, how are you? How's it going? I mean, we usually ask that. How's your day been? How's your morning? How's your afternoon, right? We all say it. I say it. We fall into that trap. We do that a lot, right? Instead of asking, how are you? How are you doing? What does that typically elicit a response of? Oh, I'm good. I'm fine. I'm cool. Living the dream one day at a time. Instead of saying, how are you? How's your day been? You can instead rephrase it now to say something like, what has been the highlight of your day so far? So you're walking up to your buddy, right? You're walking up to your buddy, John. Instead of going up to John and saying, hey, John, how's it going? And what does John say? Good. How are you doing, Tim? Good. No, 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 no. You say, hey, John, what's up? What's been the best part of your day so far? 
first of all, John's probably gonna be a little bit taken aback because no one just walks up and says that, right? The societal norm is you walk up, say, how are you? No, we try to break that societal norm. You walk up and you say, hey, John, what's been the highlight of your day so far? Haven't seen you in a while. He's like, whoa, 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 whoa. Highlight of my day. Now you gotta actually make him think. He's like, whoa, what has been the highlight of my day? And depending on what it is, he could say whatever, but it doesn't really matter what he says at that point. It's because you're trying to break the ice, get him to talking. And then after you get John to start talking about things, what then happens after you get John to start talking? Oh, John might say, instead of him saying, oh, I'm good. What does John now say? John now says, no, the highlight of my day so far has been lunch. And what did we say in past episodes? You use the mirroring technique to then take what they said and then continue the conversation. So instead, before, if you just ask the, how are you, John? He says, good. You can't really continue off of that. It's a dead end conversation. Instead, when you say, how, what's been the highlight of your day so far, John? And then he says, oh, lunch, by far lunch. Even though it's same one word, at least now you know, okay, lunch has more meat to it, no pun intended, compared to the word good. So if he says something like, oh, lunch was the best part of my day so far, then you can ask, well, why, why was lunch the best part of your day? Was it what you had for lunch? Was it a nice break from all the meetings you've had all day? And then you can start getting into a nice conversation. You can start the mirroring technique. You listen to what he's saying, whatever he says for lunch, you say what you had for lunch, or if he has something that's really, really cool, you've never had it before, then you can start talking to him about his lunch, or he starts talking to you about your lunch. Or if it's a break from all the meetings, you can say, oh, I'm sorry to hear you got all those meetings today. Hopefully they were, hopefully they went really, really well. And you talked about something and got some, some good information across to people. And then you can get into that conversation of how that was going. You see how you can just start branching this conversation out while at the same time you're building rapport. And at the same time, you're showing interest in this person's life and what's going on. I'm just going to leave it at that. Just let that marinate and think about the power that sits behind that. So in different social and professional settings, it's very important to tailor our small talk topics to suit the environment in the past example that i gave that would be a good example of if you're in the office you walk up to somebody you ask them how their day's been going or what's been the highlight of their day rather and then that's that works because you're in an office setting you're in an office environment but if you're in a social event you're probably not gonna i got a party you're not gonna ask somebody hey how's that meeting been going for you someone was probably not in a meeting that day so that would not be the point in time to ask about a meeting. At that point, you might be asking the person about their hobbies. What movies have they seen recently? Do they play any good video games? I mean, at the time that this episode's being released, people are doing their fantasy football team. You could start talking about that. You could start talking about their recent travels. Whatever you want to talk about, the world is your oyster, okay? You talk about whatever you want to talk about, but whatever you do try to talk about, keep in mind you have a general idea of where you want the conversation to go. And then once you have that idea, backtrack and then find a way to have an opening question that allows that person to just generally be open to having a conversation with you. On the other hand, as we talked about with the professional setting, you can focus on things like your industry trends, your current events, or even seek advice on anything specifically work related. I'm not going to go through that one again because we already did with the past example. But it's very important to understand that if adapting your small talk to the context shows that you are present in the moment, you are attentive to what's going on, you actually care about the conversation, and that subconsciously creates in the other person's mind the concept and the notion that you are actually trying to make a meaningful connection. You're present. You're not just going to some kind of script you rehearsed in your head. Very important. Very, very important. Now, making small talk. We're going to switch gears a little bit here. Making small talk more enjoyable. Because we talked about now how to do it, but that doesn't really quite cover how to make it more fun. And I hate to break the news to you as I hate to break it to myself, but if it's just something you don't like to do, it's not really going to change. Chances are it's not going to change something that you enjoy doing. However, what I can offer to you is a chance and a potential and some advice that worked for me to make it less painful. So making small talk more enjoyable. It's all about finding some common ground and fostering some genuine 
interest. Notice how this keeps coming back, this same theme of common interest, be intrigued in the other person. Why is this the common point that keeps coming back? Because at the core, people are selfish. They want to talk about themselves. They want the world to revolve around them. So what happens? You give that to them. You give them the opportunity to talk about themselves, elaborate upon themselves, and just go free to talk about what they've been doing. And then you just sit there, take it in and listen. And they think you're a great communicator. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you. The amount of times I've been told He's a great communicator. And I have said like 20% of the conversation because I'm just using the stuff I'm telling you on these episodes, just mirroring, taking genuine interest and just asking questions based on what they said already. Bro, they take care of 80% of the work. I'm telling you, they take care of 80% of the work. It's not that difficult. Now, back to what I was saying off my little soapbox tangent there. One way to achieve finding this common ground and fostering this genuine interest that I mentioned a couple minutes ago is to actually actively listen. Oh boy, here we go. He's here with this active listening again. I'm telling you this over and over again because it works. I'm telling you it works. I do this myself. It works. I know you have to use brain power, but I'm telling you it works. You actively listen to people and then you ask them follow up questions based on the mirroring stuff we talked about a couple episodes back. I'm telling you, you do this consistently. Eventually, you're going to find somebody who thinks you are the best communicator they ever came in touch with. Combine that with all the other stuff we haven't really talked about that much, like keeping eye contact with the person and open body language, which we we haven't even really dove into a ton yet. But you combine it with all of that. You're a menace. You're a menace in conversations. I'm telling you, you're a menace. When you show curiosity about the other person's experiences, their opinions, it shows that you are not only trying to make the conversation more engaging, not consciously, of course, the person not thinking, oh, he's trying to engage me more. No, it's subconscious. Like this person really is taking interest in me. It shows the other person that you're talking to that you truly, truly value their input. Remember, big point here, small talk is not just about talking. That's not the goal. Remember I said before, you want to have a goal in mind when you're going into these conversations. The goal is not just to talk with small talk. That's not the goal. The goal of small talk is to use it as a bridge. Remember we said way back in the beginning of the episode, use the small talk as a bridge to help create an opportunity for a genuine connection. Bonus point tip that I didn't write down here. If you're able to, and you can, you can do some research on the person. We have the worldwide internet and AI at our disposals, at our fingertips. Use it, okay? If you're gonna go to some kind of networking event and you're gonna see, I don't know, Tony Robbins or something, obviously do some research on the man and figure out what it is that you wanna talk to him about. So that way, when you start off the small talk, conversation however you want to be able to form that bridge and be able to provide value to someone like tony robbins to get him intrigued take genuine interest in what he's interested in or in his problem point that he has going on that's how you start creating that genuine connection now am i going to say you're going to become best friends with the man most likely not because the man is incredibly busy and he's got other stuff to do but take that to a much smaller scale find somebody who's locally well known When you go to a comedy club or something of that nature, go talk to the person, find them after the show and then let them know. Even if you're saying, well, I don't want to become famous in the comedy club. You don't have to be. The point is you're trying to practice talking to somebody, opening with small talk, understanding in your head, what is the goal I want to get out of this? Oh, I just want to be able to practice my small talk communication skills and be able to just understand how to impromptu different kinds of communication great you do that you work on that when the conversation's done you shake their hand and say it was a pleasure meeting you have a good rest of your tour and then you leave at any point in time you can just give them that exit saying it was great to talk to you shake their hand leave it's fine they got stuff to do too don't worry about it okay and also also another point some people might be questioning oh what if i look awkward again go back and listen to my podcast episode number one episode two and episode three and then come back and at this point in time this is episode 124 go back and listen to episode 122 123 and 124 
I'm telling you, if you go back and listen to those old episodes and you come back and listen to these new episodes, you cannot look me in my face and tell me that these episodes have not gotten better. You cannot tell me. Audio's gotten better. Visuals, those didn't even exist. So was I awkward in the start? Yes, because I had no idea what I was doing at all. I just popped on, I just threw on a microphone. In fact, the microphone is still over here in my drawer. I just grabbed the microphone, popped it in front of my mouth and said, let's just start talking and see what this does. For over a year, I got no views on the podcast. None, zero, zilch, nada. For the first 40 to 50 episodes, it was awkward. I did not know what I was doing. I was just trying something out. And now look, now we get hundreds of listens. You guys must love the value and I'm so glad that you all love the value. Now we get hundreds of listens a month. But the only reason why is because I was able to really lean into that discomfort, lean into that awkwardness and really, really say, I'm just going to stick with it. I'm going to keep practicing it. Anything in life you've done. Tell me any one thing you've done in life that you got right the first time. I'll wait. From a baby, you tried to walk. You didn't walk the first time. When you tried to feed yourself the first time, you didn't do it right. When you tried to learn how to write, you didn't do it right the first time. When you were learning your alphabet, you didn't do it right the first time. When you were learning your math and you were learning your reading and your writing and the sciences and all those kind of things, you didn't do it right the first time. So why should having a conversation with somebody and this be a skill you haven't practiced yet, why should this be any different? So get rid of that limiting belief of, oh, what if it's awkward? It's going to be. Embrace it. Embrace the fact that it's going to be awkward and understand you're going to make some oopsies. It's going to be awkward at times. There's going to be awkward silences. When I say in the past, embrace them. What's the worst that could happen? You have that awkward silence and say, well, it was a pleasure meeting you. Shake the hand. Get out of there. You're done. You always have your backup plan. Okay, I'm off of my second soapbox of the episode. So another way to make small talk more meaningful is by sharing personal stories or anecdotes. This vulnerability allows for the other person to connect with you on a much deeper level and encourages them to also reciprocate by sharing their own experiences, usually on like the, the same the same kind of level. So when you talk about anything with small talk or whatever, and that's why you usually hear a lot of times, especially if you work in an office setting, you'll hear a lot of people say, Oh, my niece, my nephew, my son, my daughter, this, this, that, and the other. And then you'll usually hear some other person who has a niece, nephew, son, or daughter, or whatever. They'll reciprocate with some similar story of some similar personality level. Keeping it at that normal level of just family, friends, maybe a quick embarrassing moment that uh, it was very public and everybody else saw. That kind of thing. People are more willing to say, oh, this person was vulnerable. They let me into their life a little bit more. Maybe I can do the same thing back to them. Not everybody, but a lot of times you will get that experience back. And doing that allows you to then get closer and bond with that other person more so than had you just made a normal connection talking about how's your day? How's the weather? Lastly, let's discuss how to make small talk less daunting and overall more enjoyable. It's completely natural to feel nervous or to feel uncertain when you're initiating conversations. We talked about that a little bit before on my second soapbox of the episode. But remember that most people appreciate people who take initiative. It was a certain clip that I had said in a past episode where I had said that there's two people who are in conversation. Both people are thinking, oh, I'm waiting for the other person to start the conversation. And if both people are thinking, I'm waiting for the other person to start the conversation, no conversation will occur. So what do you do? You be the big person and take the initiative and start up the conversation. How do you do that? How am I supposed to initiate the conversation, Rashawn? I don't know how to do that. One word. I got one word for you. And that word is confidence confidence how in the world is confidence supposed to help me let me tell you brother man confidence plays a significant role why let me backtrack a little bit remember when i said before 
how you want to have your complete idea of how you want the conversation to go in your mind. Where do you want this conversation to end up? What do you want the outcome to be? Do you want to just practice your skills? Do you want to be able to potentially make a new network connection? What do you want to do? And then you backtrack and you reverse engineer in your mind, okay, because I want to do this, I want to do X, Y, Z, I want to have this conversation end. But again, not being married to that idea, understanding that it could just not pan out, that happens. But the idea, at least you have the idea, and then you reverse engineer it back and say, okay, here's how I'm gonna open and go in. What do you think that instills in you? It instills in you the confidence to know I'm going to be the person to start the conversation because if I don't start the conversation, that person is going to start the conversation. And if they start the conversation, they're doing the same exact tactic that I'm doing, meaning I'm going to be now at the mercy of where they want to lead the conversation. And it's just going to be a little bit of a verbal back and forth. And you both, especially if you're not aligned on what you want the conversation to do, it, it, it might turn into a little bit of, of, of a mess. So what do you want to do? You want to be able to go in, start the conversation. So you already start off on the front foot. And doing that, you now have the confidence from having the plan and where you want to lead the conversation. And so now knowing that most people don't want to initiate, they'll just kind of follow the lead of the conversation, especially if you have that aura of like, I'm going to start the conversation. I'm going to talk to you because I know what I want to talk to you about. Most people will just follow in the lead of that conversation. Naturally, that's just what's going to happen. So if you come in with that, you now have that confidence to lead the conversation where you want to go. Oh, you see how this is starting to link together? If it's not, sit with this concept for a while. Rewind a little bit. Sit with that concept for a little bit. But confidence, it plays a significant role. So when you approach the small talk conversation that you're going to have with a positive mindset and most likely open to a new connection, open to just trying to be able to facilitate your ability to just have these small talk conversations, once you approach it with that sort of mentality, you begin to just embrace that and say, okay, each interaction that I'm going to have, I'm going to embrace the opportunity to practice these skills. I'm going to embrace the opportunity to learn from every single conversation. Because what have I said in past episodes? We do not take it as a loss. We take it as a lesson. Every single opportunity that we have in life it's a growth opportunity. Every single one. You can see it as a loss if you want to. Sure, why not go ahead? But how is that going to benefit you? You can be down in the dumps and say, oh, that conversation didn't go well. Or you can say, hmm, that conversation didn't go well. What can I fix for next time? There's no point to just beat yourself up and say there's nothing you can learn from it. Rewind in your head how that conversation went. Did you approach incorrectly? Did you, uh, 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 did you stutter too much? Did you not have a proper plan going in? Reverse engineer it in your mind. Really, really think about, okay, what did I do that I can fix for next time? Really think about it and really, really truthfully write it down. What did you not do that time that you want to improve for next time? And then next time you have a small talk conversation of any sort with anybody, practice it. So as we close, I'm just going to leave you all with this one last high level, like summary sentence thing that I that, that I came up with here. And I'll say that small talk, it could be the gateway to meaningful conversations, but only if we approach it with intention, desire and genuine interest. Intention, desire and genuine interest interest if we go into small talk with that in mind with that idea of what we want to do in our minds it can be the gateway to meaningful conversations and by mastering small talk everybody we can build relationships we can go ahead and expand our networks because let's be honest every friendship pretty much started off by somebody breaking the ice and we can create those memorable moments and memorable occasions with other people Guys, that's where I want to leave you for this week's episode. Lots of sauce in this week's episode. So definitely you're going to want to go back and re-listen to this one. Thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of Motivate, Grind, Succeed, the podcast. And I hope you got something valuable from this episode. Again, if you enjoyed the show, go ahead, leave a rating, a review. If you see any of the shorts, go ahead and leave a comment down below on any of those shorts or on the Instagram reels that you see. Anytime you get a response is coming directly from me. It really does mean a lot for me to see all the, the positive feedback that I get. 
Thank you guys so much for all that. Keep it coming. I love to see them. I love to know that you guys are really getting value. If you want even more value, though, you can join that email list and become part of the inner circle. Just saying, I'm just, just going to just going to drop it right there. You know, get the inside scoop on some new episodes that come up, some exclusive merch drops when we have those coming up, upcoming events and really, really big upcoming news. I do have some news upcoming very, 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 very soon. Very soon. Can't put a date on it yet, but it is coming very soon. So don't let that FOMO get the best of you guys. If you want to know what this big, big, big announcement is going to be, you're going to want to sign up for the email list because they'll hear about it first before I announce it on the podcast in the little announcement section. And guys, also don't forget, if you're passionate about supporting the show and you're just like, I just want to give this man my money. (laughs) <laughs> you can go ahead and do that go ahead to mgsclub.club there is a spot for donations on there if you want to go buy some merch you can do that you want to go buy some ebooks you could do that you want the free ebooks that are on there you can go ahead and do that as well overall guys thank you so much for your unwavering support on the show i greatly appreciate it thank you guys so much for coming back to hear this information from some rando guy on the internet glad i'm giving you all value take care and i will see you guys next time